Now, once you find your library that you have already, okay, this is where we're going to create our very first thing, which is source physical file. So you right click on your library and go to new source physical file. New source physical file. Okay. Now, let's call this one. Now you use your initials and 18. And we're going to hit finish. This is your new source physical file in your library. Okay. So we are done with step number one, which is source physical file. You right click, you create a new member. Okay. So the name of the member, we're going to call this one chapter five, example one. Then from the member type, you pick CLLE. And then you hit finish. Now, this is how you write your comments in CL. So, this is one of the approaches that you will find in the book. So the sealed program starts with PGM program. So as soon as I type that and press enter, it automatically fixes it as to where it should go. So we will now going to go to variable declarations. In CL, variables are declared with DCL. That's, you do not have a variation like RPG, DCL, hyphen this, hyphen that. It's just DCL, okay? Followed by the name of a variable. Variable names start with an ampersand. So, ampersand. Followed by the name of the variable. Followed by the data types. The data types start with asterisk. Followed by the size. And as soon as you hit enter, it organizes it. When you only provide the, the values, you are basically working on positional notation, right? So I'll show you how to do variables using keyword notations. So you still type DCL, but now you type var, that's the name of your first parameter, and the name of the variable followed by type and the data type of your variable, followed by length and the length of your variable. So as you see, we follow the same stuff, but the first line does positional, the second line does keyword. So variables are declared with the DCL. All variable names are with ampersands. All data types are with asterisk and followed by the length. And you use space as a separator. And then it automatically arranges everybody. Okay, now let's talk about the procedure. So since we are doing this example, I would also like to introduce labels to you. How do you do labels? You put a name of a label and you put colon. And as soon as you put colon, notice where it places the label. So labels are automatically pushed to the site. Okay. Label is just a way for you to jump from one place in your program to another place in the program. Okay. So usually you will see that programmers will have start label and end label to show the start and end of, end of the program, not necessarily for jumping purpose. Start and end. Okay. 
Now here, I am issuing a seal command, which will be which will be used to retrieve a system value. So retrieve system value. That's a command. Retrieve system value. Now notice when I will type my commands, I will use keyword notations, not positional notations. So it has a parameter called sysval. This is the name of the parameter, okay? And it has another parameter called return value. And this is where I put my variable. So basically I'm asking him the, ret the retrieve system value to grab the time and when you have grabbed it, return it in this variable. So this is where you can see some CL at work, that how you can get a value from the command and pass it to a variable. Send. BGM message, which is send program message. This is another command which has a parameter called message. This is where I can write my message. And this is the message that on the green screen shows at the bottom. The current, I can turn on my caps lock here. Okay. The current time is, so this is a system keyword call for concatenation purpose. Uh, so we have this time is our variable this, the time is a variable that we're displaying. So we're concatenating the message with a variable. So this is this is how you concatenate a variable with a message. Return. That was something that you did in RPG2, if you remember. And the end of the program. Okay, so very simple program. I do have a variable here that I declared, but I'm not using it. Now, once we are done with the program, it is time to compile the program. So we're going to click on compile, compile, and create. Now here he's complaining about a few things. This is how it shows you the error message. So I made a mistake and that mistake was on purpose for you to be able to see the error message. What is the problem? He's saying that on line number 15, I do not understand this guy return val. Why? Because the actual parameter is return var. Okay? So as soon as you make a mistake, he doesn't understand it, he starts complaining. So you double click, he will take you there. You simply replace the L with an R. Press enter or save changes, whatever you want to do. Again, to get rid of a line in the editor, you go in the column and you type D1 to delete a line, okay? And I1 to insert a line, but you don't really need to insert lines here. Pressing enter will do that. Anyway, so once you're done with this, notice here it puts a little blue check box saying that that error was fixed. Okay. Now, go to compile, compile, create module, okay? So the error is gone, right? Right. Now you have two warnings. Why, why do I have a second warning? Because I have a variable that has been declared on line 110, but I am not using it. So I am aware of that warning. Okay. Now, what is the second warning? I do not have an end program. Okay. So now in the line where I have my end, okay, this is all going to type end PGM. And PGM. This is the end of my program. So just like I have PGM at the beginning of my program, I have end PGM at the end of the program. So look at my line 108. So let's go to the green screen from RDI. And that's where, okay, so you right click on your server and then you can go to host connection emulator. The host connection emulator, you click on it, it opens a green screen, you compile, you basically log in. And once you log in, you have to, yeah, so go back, go back to compile and choose the <coughs> first version, which is, bun yeah, <coughs> because when you do module, you have to then bind it to a program. So do a bind CL. So compile, 
create bind CL. Okay. Uh, after we declared the variables, we just wrote a CL command. We learned to pass a value from a CL command to a variable, and we learned to show the output of the variable on the prompt. Since we are not binding this to a program, therefore we will going to be using bind CL 